Hello. In this video, we're going to talk about the Whitler current source or the Whitler current mirror. Um, and before we go ahead and do the derivations, we're going to talk about its advantages already. Uh, the main advantage of the Whitler current source with respect to a basic current mirror, as we will see, is that uh, it allows to generate small uh, values of current, output current, without incurring in large resistor values. Let's imagine that we have our simple uh, basic current mirror and we wanted to generate a current of, say, 10 microamps. So I want my I out to be 10 microamps. In order to achieve that, I will have to uh, select my resistor values according to the following equation. My I out, which is approximately equal to the reference current, uh, is set by the value of resistor R. And so it will be equal to uh, VCC minus 1 VBE drop divided by R. Let's imagine that my VCC was equal to 10 volts. This will be 10 minus uh, 0.7 volts divided by R. And if I want to make this equal to 10 micro, my R will be essentially equal to 9.3 volts divided by 10 microamps or 930 kilo ohms. So that's a very large resistor value. And in integrated circuits, large resistor values are one difficult to fabricate, uh, but two, they take up a lot of area. So large R value um, difficult to fabricate and bulky, not suitable for IC design. And now let's take a look at how um, the Whitler current source will um, solve this limitation. And so the Whitler current mirror is going to allow us to generate small output currents without large resistors. Uh, let's go ahead and get started on the analysis. We're going to assume, as always, that the transistors are well matched. So assume matched transistors for our Q1 and Q2. We are also going to, for um, simplicity in our calculations, neglect the base currents, which is equivalent to saying we're going to assume that uh, beta is much larger than 1. Therefore, neglect base currents, which is essentially the same as saying IC1 is going to be approximated as IREF. Now, our reference current, which again is going to be approximately equal to IC1, is equal to uh, IS times E to the VBE1 divided by VT. I'm going to call this IS1. That's just the general relationship between uh, the collector current and the base to emitter voltage. And I, I out is going to be equal to IC2, which is equal to IS2, E to the VBE2 divided by VT. Uh, since our transistors are well matched, we can assume IS1 to be equal to IS2. Um, so since transistors are matched, IS1 equals IS2, which we can just write as IS. Um, However, notice that in this case we can't assume VBE1 to be equal to VBE2 because VBE1 is the voltage uh, from the base of Q1 to ground and VBE2 um, is the voltage across the base emitter junction of transistor Q2. Uh, you'll notice just from the picture that VBE1 is going to be equal to VBE2 plus I out times RE, which is the voltage drop across resistor RE. Okay. Uh, 
So I can go ahead and um, solve these equations for VBE1 and VBE2. And I'll get VBE1 uh, will be equal to Bt times the natural log of I ref divided by Is. And again, I'm using Is because I'm assuming now both um, um, Is1 and Is2 are equal to each other. And VBE2 will be equal to Vt natural log of I ref over Is. Oh. I out over I S in this case. All right, and now I can simply um, solve for VBE1 minus VBE2 from those equations. This will be VT natural log of I ref over I S uh, minus VT natural log of I out over is and again we can see from the picture that this difference is going to be equal to i out times re i can apply the properties of logarithms um, and the um, uh, subtraction of logarithms is equal to the logarithm of the ratio so i can rewrite this as i out times re being equal to vt uh, natural log of i ref over is divided by i out over is or vt natural log of i ref over i out and this is the equation that governs um, the relationship between i, I ref and i out in the Wittler current source. Now, um, it may not be obvious that this will allow us to uh, generate a small output currents using not so small output resistors. So in order to illustrate that, we're going to see an example. Uh, so we started this activity looking at uh, what size resistor will we need in a basic mirror to generate a 10 microamp output current. And we concluded it was 930 kilo ohms. So let's go ahead and take a look at what size resistors we will need to generate the same current using a Wittler current source. So I'll call that my example. Up to EG. Um, I want with a Wittler current mirror. I want an I out of 10 microamps with VCC equals 10 volts. And the, the good news here is that I can set, uh, because of my resistor RE, I can say, set my output current to be smaller than the reference current. And so I'm going to set my reference current, IREF, to something like one milliamp, which is going to give me a reasonable value for uh, resistor R. And now I just need to um, uh, solve that equation. Let's take a look at the value of resistor R though, before uh, I move on. So that will be my R will be equal to uh, the voltage across the resistor VCC minus VVE divided by my reference current. And so this will be 10 minus 0 0.7 divided by 1 milliamp. Which is now 9.3 kilo ohms, so 100 times smaller than the previous resistor. But yet I'm going to be able to um, program my output current. So I'll calculate my RE value needed to uh, program my output current to 10 microamps now. And it's going to be VT over I out natural log of I ref over I out. Vt is the thermal voltage, so 25 millivolts divided by 10 microamps times the natural log of 1 milliamp divided by 10 microamps. And that gives me 5 kilo ohms for my resistor. So voila, I've been able to generate uh, the same current, 10 microamps, uh, with resistors 
um, in the kilo ohm range, less than 10 kilo ohms, as opposed to uh, almost one mega ohm with the basic mirror. So hopefully that uh, highlights the advantages of the Wheeler current source. For the output resistance, we can see that uh, it's going to be just the same as an emitter degenerated current mirror, because this is essentially an emitter degenerated mirror with the special case that RE is equal to zero ohms or a short circuit. Uh, so the output resistance is going to follow the same expression, R out times 1 plus GM RE in parallel with R pi. Uh, again, the maximum value is going to be R out times 1 plus beta. And so advantages of this circuit, um, we've already mentioned it, allows small output current using uh, reasonable size resistors uh, these advantages or trade-offs is uh, number one you'll notice from the equation that uh, i out depends on the thermal voltage On VT, which has a strong temperature dependence, and therefore this circuit is going to be more sensitive to temperature variations. Um, as well as, just as with the emitter degenerated current mirror, we have now RE um, and a voltage drop across RE uh, in series with um, the collector to emitter voltage for transistor Q2. So that's going to essentially lower our compliance range. So lower compliance range than basic mirror. And that's it. Thank you.